So I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. Our first talk is by Philip Nyman on curvature formulas for direct image. This is of, of relative canonical bundles for the Poincaré twist. Okay, thanks a lot for this kind um, introduction. And let me thank the organizers for the invitation to this conference. So I came here with my little family and so we enjoy um, Miami a lot. And to the topic for today is, um, as written here, uh, a curvature formula for direct images. And um, the whole thing in, the, in a, the open case. And I start with the following um, quite general setting. So we consider um, a proper holomorphic submersion of um, complex manifolds. So it's a, it's a smooth map from um, script X to, to S. And L is um, just a, at the moment a holomorphic line bundle on the total space. And then um, naturally attached to this um, geometric situation, one has the, the relative canonical bundle and it's um, somehow the canonical bundle in algebraic geometry is the main object of study. So um, we classify varieties according to the positivity of the canonical bundle and the relative canonical somehow is the, compares this uh, positivity um, by, um, by, um, of the total space and the base and Moreover, when we restrict the, the relative canonical bundle to the, to the fiber, we just get a canonical of the fiber. And by, by looking at this relative thing here, we can somehow study how this um, positivity varies in the family. Yeah, but um, so we could either study um, directly this, this relative canonical bundle, or as in this talk, we, um, we could we will look at the um, it's, uh, it's pushed forward, <laughs> so somehow can look at F lower star, and then in this situation, the relative canonical, and then to get some, to have, to have some, uh, to be more, more flexible in, 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 in applications, we look at this joint bundle here, so we twist by some bundle L, and of course, so uh, a general fiber of this over a small point S will just be the space of twist global um, twisted um, uh, canonical forms. X as some compact fiber here, and then the canonical forms twisted by by L go restricted to the fiber. And then the the, the, yeah, the the space of global sections is the, the algebraic measure of um, of positivity and one uh, natural question is now that um, we impose on um, positivity on L so we say given say you have a emission a positive metric on L does this somehow we stand to some positivity properties of the of the direct image and the the central uh, result in this direction is, is Bernsohn's result, which just says that, um, which uh, gives an affirmative answer to this question. So if L is, say, emission positive, so which that means that there's an emission metric with, um, with semi positive curvature, then uh, also the direct image sheet um, um, has, this, has some positivity, in, even in the strong sense, in the strongest sense of Nakano. So if it's Strictly positive L, then we also get strict positivity in the sense of Nakam. And um, for the Roche series, maybe you, you know the case when L is um, there's just a trivial bundle, then it's the, somehow the, the lowest piece of the Hodge filtration, and it follows from, from Griffith's computation of the curvature of the Hodge bundles that you have also positivity or semi positivity in, in this in the untwisted case. Yeah? But this is somehow. Um, the twisted case, and it, um, to obtain this, it requires yeah, new uh, and completely new uh, computation. And um, yeah, to, to give you maybe a, a taste of how this uh, result can. Sorry? It's still going to be zero. 
Um, yeah, it could. Yeah, it could, of course, it could be zero. Then it's semi as well. It's zero somehow the curvature. Okay, and uh, okay, and, and it's also written that it's locally free automatically. A priori, it's only a torsion free sheet, but um, the 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 locally freeness just follows from the Zara Takigoshi theorem because um, we have yeah we can extend um, twisted uh, canonical forms from the fiber uh, from central fiber to nearby fibers. And then just to give you a very direct and simple application of this result, we look at the following. So, okay, maybe I should also mention, so in, in the case that we also study somehow today, when L is really strictly positive along the fibers, which means relatively positive, there's really an intrinsic curvature from there that allows to, um, that has some geometric uh, interpretation. Yeah, in the following sense. So Bernson proved that if the, the direct image is somewhat really flat in a, some open neighborhood of some fixed point in the base, then you can um, trivialize your vibration and as well somehow some, uh, the, the metric on, on each L. Yeah, this means somehow you, you can, uh, this is done by the fact you, you lift a, um, a vector field on the base, uh, you can lift it in, in a holomorphic way to the total space. So this gives the um, trivialization of the family holomorphic trivialization, and then moreover, you can lift this vector field to the total space of the line bundle, and this gives even a trivialization um, of, the, of the line bundle and the metric living there. Yeah? So we can really move the metric around by, by the flow, corresponding flow of this vector field. And then, um, so this is somehow the best situation we can imagine. And so how can this be another uh, applied in a, another way. So given such a, a smooth family and say the total space is Fano, then we can cl conclude from Bernstein's result that the base is Fano as well, yeah? And this is just, we look at L as also in applications, L will often be some, some just a mul multiple of the, of the relative canonical, or, but in this case here, minus the canonical of the of, uh, script X. And so in the final case, this is positive. Then we just plug it in uh, for L and we get that minus K is, is, is positive on the base. And of course this result has... Um, Before it was semi, it was semi positive. Now it's positive. I mean, uh, it uh, was in parentheses. I, I did this in the statement, semi was in, in parentheses, yeah? So uh, when L is strictly positive, we also get strict positivity for the direct image, yeah? This is how this uh, was, was meant, the statement, yeah? When in, it's uh, exactly applied in this situation in the strict positive case. And of course, this is a very simple application, but still this, has, this result has generalizations, for instance, when, when minus kx is nef and then also minus ks is nef and so on. Okay, then um, what's um, somehow, then more, uh, they are well given by, there's this um, important generalization to the, to the singular version, to, to the singular setting given by Benson, Benson and Pound shortly after Benson's result. And this deals with um, just um, pseudo effective line bundle L given with some singular metric H that has a semi-positive curvature, semi-positive curvature current. And in, in this case, we only have, we have to look at a L2 integrable section. So IH is here now the, the multiplier ideal sheet given by this singular metric H. And here, this means we, we um, we have to, we, we, when we twist by this, we only look at the L2 integrable um, canonical forms, uh, L valued canonical forms. And then the result is that this is also admits a uh, the direct image, admits a singular emission metric, which is now a positive in the singular sense of Griffiths. So this notion was introduced in, in the, uh, also in the Bernson Pound work. Yeah, so it could also be as well that this is somehow. Is it, isn't it there? So yeah. Um, I think um, so, 
Yeah, I think it should. Yeah, I think in the in the projective case when you have um, invariance of pure region error, I think it should be uh, locally free. But so I'm not so sure in the in the general case. I think I think it's not. I'm uh, not sure in the general case. So they have to first restrict to the to the locals where it's locally free, and then somehow they they extend the metric. Yeah, it's not automatic. Okay. Um, then, okay, um, in this uh, direction, so closely related, what I started with is the uh, positivity properties of uh, <coughs> m times the relative uh, canonical bundle. So here it should be a, a script x. Somehow, yeah, I change, somehow I change notation here. So x is really standing for the total space here. And uh, in this direction, so, there was this result by um, recent result by Zhao and Sir Paul, who also gave uh, a curvature case in the uh, in the uh, in this singular uh, curvature formula in the singular case. Uh, in the Bernson Paul result, they somehow obtained this positivity. Um, somehow it's more a it's more a qualitative statement without an explicit curvature formula. But this was then um, given by Zhao and Sir Paul. But in this case. Um, Somehow did they generalize the Benson computation from the case when when L is smooth, but in this case this formula doesn't have such a nice geometric interpretation. No? So um, somehow it's not not yet enough um, to, to really have um, maybe. So they are not really not really um, not yet satisfied with with this form of, of formula they they get here. Of course the question is also what what can you really expect in such a in such a, a general situation, and the main, um, I think, the, the main motivation why we why we study this is this um, so-called Itaka uh, conjecture from from the MMP from birational geometry, in which says uh, um, if you have an algebraic fiber space in the projective category, just such a, a, a subjective uh, map with uh, connected fibers between projective varieties, I say maybe in, in a simpler case between smooth projective varieties. And then um, we have this sub-additivity property of um, Kodaira dimension. Yeah, so Kodaira dimension is, a, um, uh, is just a measure for the cross of space of um, canonical sections. And um, so uh, uh, a major breakthrough in, in, in this direction was um, then done by was achieved by Tsao and Paun, who uh, could show that this is this is true if the basis um, an abelian variety. So this they they work uh, built uh, upon um, earlier work by by Fiebig, who already observed that um, so the main ingredient to study this problem are positivity properties of m times uh, so the relative canonical or the direct image of it. So actually they positivity properties of both ob objects are somehow closely related. And there's also some feedback inequality which relates um, those two objects. Um, somehow the, the M times canon relative canonical and the determinant of the, or the pullback is the determinant of the push forward. Yeah. And this is also used in their work. And um, maybe, um, so in the case of an abelian variety in the, in the Itaka, Conjecture, there's so kappa y is is, is not a kappa um, kappa y is not there, it's just zero. So this more or less means that you need to extend um very canonical sections in the fiber to the to the to the total space. Yeah. And this is where positivity properties of the before that there was the case of curves. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there were previous work by uh, other people, Kavamata and Fivek and of course they. So they don't have to start from scratch, of course. So they built upon this earlier work, and um, so I think in in general um, to make progress on on this conjecture, I think the the general idea is to that um, somehow mm -hmm. if you if you study such an equation from x to y, then you look at uh, at somehow that this. Uh, M times the relative canonical. 
And also, this comes with some natural metric, the so called Ems Bergman kind of metric. And this is also, it's known that this is semi positive. And then the question is, what um, what what is, what um, what is the meaning of those directions with with um, with with um, curvature zero? What are the flat directions? Yeah? What are the flat directions? And the idea is somehow that the, that the flat flat direction of of this uh, line bundle here, emission line bundle, that they um, Somehow um, they um, give a foliation on the total space such that we can get somehow uh, that such that this vibration factors over another space C, which is um, somehow the space of leaf of this foliation. Yeah, maybe only in some in some rational, in some weaker sense, maybe only in some rational sense. And so that we can somehow separate the, 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 the flat directions from the strictly positive directions of this uh, of this of this natural line bundle here. And this means, to, in order to, to do such a thing, you really need a good geometric um, interpretation of its, its curvature here, yeah, which means somehow really um, some intrinsic curvature from this, and um, and also uh, also other things like some. Um, interoperability conditions of such um, of foliation given by the kernels of, of curvature for uh, one one forms. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so let's go on. Let's start with the. So this was somehow the motivational part. Let's start with the the, the setting of the the current talk, the Poincaré type setting. Again, we, start, we look at such a proper holomorphic submersion, just of complex manifolds. So S could be could be open. And um, in addition, we have um, a so-called relative S and C divisor on the on the total space, which I denote by by curly D. And relative, this just means that when I restrict it to the to the fibers, it should give a, a S and C divisor. But Actually, in, in the paper, it's uh, somehow made more precise. So, this so, so also the type of the SNC devices or the components they are constant in the family. And when it's restricted the the, the 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 map to the uh, to this device, it's also submersion, so that I somehow can trivialize in a C infinity way the, the, the this um, this this map this sub submersion so as a family of, of pairs. And so. This means, in particular, a component of this device should not be like something like a fiber or, or such a thing. So, and then so I think this is a, a, a natural condition. So I denote the open fiber by by x s prime. So the straight x is always now here a, a fiber. X s prime is an open fiber. So, and then, as as before, we have some Hermitian holomorphic line bundle. On this total space, but now it's only smooth outside the divisor, and it uh, has some specific asymptotic along D, which is given by um, by this expression. So for some reason, I gave the expression for the for the inverse metric because so in the in the numerator. So maybe first we ignore this x p u. Maybe just think of it as as, as one, and then so in the, in the numerator, there's just some usually um, the infinity metric. And then in the denominator we have it's it's some function and is we recognize here the, the Poincaré type uh, form so it has some Poincaré type uh, Poincaré cross along the devices so the inverse has Poincaré type singularities which means the metric itself has um, Poincaré type zeros yeah and why I doing exactly this will become clear uh, in a few minutes because this is exactly modeled after the log canonically polarized uh, situation yeah so in this in this um in this one so what are the objects here so h c infinity is just a smooth metric on l inverse and the sigma i's um is uh, is just here is the norm of the canonical sections cutting out the, the components of di and i measure them with respect to the, uh, some 
arbitrarily smooth metric and yeah, smaller than, than one. So that's somehow can take the logarithm. And then um, this U, this mysterious U, so it, it, it has to be there in order to, to cover this log canonically polarized situation. It's, uh, it's just, uh, some function on this open total space and which is supposed to be nice. So when it's restricted to the, to the open fibers, it should lie in CK alpha Hilder spaces. And here then CK alpha Hilder spaces with respect to some, this, this uh, so-called quasi coordinates yeah, on this open fibers. So, uh, and this map, because I want to compute curvature, so it should have some regularity along in, in the base direction, uh, should be um, cliche differentiable, yeah, in, with respect to S. So, so it, it lands in this standard space, in this um, Hilder space, and the, uh, my, um, the requirement is that this should be some, somehow differentiable, yeah, so that I can, um, so that I can, um, differentiate it so that I can um, take derivatives. And then, okay, the last condition is when, when I um, compute fiber-wise its, its curvature, it's really neat, it really should be a Poincaré type Kähler metric on, on the open fiber, yeah? So maybe at first glance, it seems that it's somehow automatic, but uh, um, in principle, this X view could somehow offset or compensate this logarithmic, uh, logarithmic uh, Poincaré type cross in the on the curvature level. So this is another somehow I, I impose this as a condition. So that um, some now I work with somehow I have this emission structure on the line bundle, and I have this um, Kähler structure on the on the on the underlying open fibers, and they have this close relationship. It's just the, the curvature of the of the of the line bundle. So I, in this case, I like in Bernstein situation, I'm in, somehow in the in a relative ample case, but here in, in in this open in the open situation. Yeah. Okay. So this is omega s was somehow the curvature restricted to the fibers, and this omega curly x prime is just the curvature on, the, on of this emission metric. So the global curvature form on the on the open total space. You know, I, I have the uh, this natural one one form with its positive uh, along, sorry, which is positive along the um, along the fibers, and then maybe to recall the Poincaré um, Poincaré type killer metric in, in 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 local coordinates. So when the divisor is just given by um, CI equals, uh, so this, the, the components of, of D are given by this, the first um, vanishing of the first um, K coordinates, then um, the Poincaré type metric just look like this. So in the first um, K components, so this are just the, the components for the device ID, I have this uh, the Poincaré type um, rows. And on the other directions, I have just the Euclidean um, given the Euclidean metric, yeah? This is just the, the usual thing here. And when I want to make somehow, uh, want to see what, what does it mean, um, what does it mean um, on, the, on, the, on the compact fiber? For the, so the, on the compact fiber, this means that this line bundle L, tensor D, L plus D is relatively big enough, yeah? Because, um, um, because when we go back to the expression of H, so when, when I compute the divide log of it, so it's curvature, so the log term in the denominator gives the Poincaré type metric. The other thing in front of it, the sigma i norm squared gives, uh, gives a, a current of integration along the divisor, which, uh, which goes away when you restrict the open part. So I need to, so actually it gives minus the current of integration. So I need to compensate it. This is why I had to, to add D. And then I have a metric there, which has um, zero Lelong numbers. And this means that the metric, that the line bundle is now NEF. And by, because it's actually uh, strictly positive on the open part, 
by Buxom's um, bigness criterion, it's then, it's then big. Yeah. And so this is somehow a special case of when when this when I when L plus so or in Bernstein or in, Ber in the in the Bernstein pound case when L is relatively big enough but a bit nicer so in the Poincaré type situation and then in this case we just uh, this is what what's appearing in, in the title of my talk we say that H inverse has a Poincaré type singularities along D which means H itself has Poincaré type zeros along D. Yeah? Okay, then in, um, to cook up a L2 metric, we need to identify um, the L2 uh, canonical forms on the fibers. And so what are, what are those? Yeah, this, these are just the, the space H, H, H0 sub two. This is, these are the L2 integrable holomorphic um, L-valued um, end forms. And this is, these are those where you, that you can integrate. And now, um, yeah, now um, by, by some previous work, so this is somehow where work of Saka and Fujiki uh, comes in or can, can be applied so that I did not really have to figure this out by my own. I, this was somehow already existent in the lit literature. So, um, this space can be identified with the, the logar uh, logarithmic n forms along, um, along D with values in S. I mean, the a simple reason is when, when H has zeros along D, the, the form can have to be L2, can still, uh, um, can still have some, some uh, poles along D, but they, still they, they, they are eaten up by the zeros along D of the metric, and they're still L2. And um, somehow, uh, what's be, what's behind this is um, yes, this um, is this um, so this is, is this article by so in the one dimensional case it's it's work on L two um, hot uh, L two uh, hot theory with degenerating coefficients. Maybe I just draw this. Um, so it's just a, a, a proposition. So when I when I look at this um, this complex here, how many complex? So I look at the at the L two uh, complex. These are um, the, the PQ forms, the two value PQ forms, <laughs> such that they are L value forms. So D bar such that D bar taking the sense of distribution is also a two in this case. Uh, a fine resolution. Of the of the, the sheaf of uh, holomorphic L2 uh, forms. I could do it for not only for the source of these forms. On, on, on X. Yes. With respect to two, with respect to this emission metric here. And so this means this is exactly somehow this, um, what it, what's appearing in Saka's work, which is somehow the, the fundamental of, of theory of, of Hodge modules, because at the end, the, the Hodge properties, they come from um, from L2 harmonic forms, so L2 harmonic theory. This is also what I what I what I'm doing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah Saka is in dimension one, but Kojiki did it then in for higher dimension. So Saka did it for this was with values in some local system, but uh, any vector bundle emission vector bundle is fine. This is then actually what Kojiki did. So he had an article about it. So this is really about the L2 uh, low lemma. So you need you really need to to solve the D bar equation, but only locally with, with L2 estimates, then for this is the more really the more technical part of, of Saka's work. This is where he did it. So he had a local situation. You can work, for instance, with Fourier series. And in Kuchiki, yeah, it's also using Fourier series, but it's a, a little bit more complicated because it's in any dimension. 
So somehow you need to to um, to to do uh, three things. First, you need to identify this this uh, this uh, forms here, this uh, this sheet. And this is the easiest part because it's just lost the whole series expansion. That is uh, exactly the logarithmic uh, p forms. And then you need to prove this this uh, this L two Lolbo lemma so that you get a, a resolution. And then a fine resolution is also not automatic. For for this you need that uh, someone need cutoff functions whose differentials are bounded. But this is also fine in the operator setting. And this was also very successfully applied by by Sucker. And I um, also used this 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 results here. And then and then from this. Yeah, so somehow the book is uh, required has some more pages. <laughs> it's particularly well, but yeah, I think it's also done here. It's for your serious um, expansion, yeah. And then, um, so now you are in the local setting, you only need to talk to you locally, and so you really have the free in using your method, so you can explicitly somehow write down the, the primitives for the, the, the double equation. Yeah. And this, and by, well, then this, this means that for low lemma holds, so you can, you can say that uh, uh, the, the, the low um, and two commodity, so L2 and uh, closed, um, L2 and closed forms model L2 exact forms, are just um, on, the, on the open part, just um, isomorphic to the to the sheet cohomology on the, the compact manifold here x so it's just x is now just um, fixed i back here and this is uh, with respect to this this locally free sheets here now the p logarithmic p forms then in particular it's 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 fine as I mentioned yeah so it's a priori not clear that this uh, L2 the both homology is five dimension, but up, this is on a complex space homology just uh, of a locally free sheet that's finite dimensional. So. And from this, one can also conclude that the, the image of the bar is closed, because otherwise, if the image would not be closed, if you are in a inhibitor space and you have a subspace. And if the subspace is not closed, then it would have infinite co-dimension in its closure. Yeah? And this uh, cohomology could never be finite yeah? And because of this, uh, one gets that the image of the bar is closed. So now taken here in the L2, in the L2 sense, and then also the image of its uh, Hilbert space adjoint is, is closed. And we can identify this um, this uh, homology here with the harmonic forms. So we really have harmonic theory. Harmonic forms on X uh, with values here in this one. So, so it's pretty much like in in, in, in Sucker's, uh, Sucker's uh, result. And then moreover, you really get um, that a strong Hodge decomposition on the on the level of forms holds too. Yeah, you can decompose L two into harmonic forms and uh, the image of the the image of the Laplace operator. So this is somehow the Laplace extended the, the maximal extension to the to the L two forms for the Gaffney extension. And because of Gaffney Stokes theorem in the complete setting, this is also um, it's a self adjoint um, semi positive operator. So, okay. I think at some point in the conference, there was this question about is there a harmonic theory in the open case? Of course, there is. Otherwise, there would not, there were no, no Hodge modules. Yeah. So, and this is what uh, I, I'm using here a, a lot. And then I can define the L, L2 metric. So, I, I have to assume. Somehow also the uh, locally freeness of the direct image. So I, I, I think it's it's not automatic here in, in this situation because I have this 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 device ID. 
So um, I assume that that this dimension is constant. So this implies that the direct image is locally free. Otherwise, I just restrict to this to this terrestrial opposite where this holds true. And then this is really the, the, the direct image we are looking at now. Yeah? We, we have to look at logarithmic um, and forms. And now this is why D is now appearing here. This is the right object we have to look at because these things here, what I did in the, on the fiber is also supposed to be more, more closely. Yeah? That, that this gives you the resolution of the, of the thing on the, on, the, on the total space. And because of this, this is the right object to look at. And then I just take a, a local holomorphic section, which is given by some, some n form on the total space. So it's a, a logarithmic n form L, L valued. And in particular, it it's, it's restricts to a L2 uh, integrable form on the fibers. And I can, I have its L2 metric. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's actually, uh, it's, it's, can be written easier as the, as the right-hand side expression because it's n, n zero form is primitive. So you have this, the hot Riemann bilinear, bilinear relations. And then, yeah, this is, this is the direct metric I want to study on the, this is the L2 metric I want to study on the, on the, on the direct image. Yeah, it's just a natural L2 metric. It's just the fiber integrating the, those forms along, along the fibers. Then, um, okay, we have the metric. Then the question is, what about it's, it's can we get a nice curvature formula? And for this, uh, somehow the curvature formula will consist of, of two terms. And there will um, appear some, some expressions, some natural uh, objects coming out from this, this the given geometry. Because remember, we have uh, some complex variation of complex, you know, we have some variation in the complex structure. We have some variation in the line bundle and also in the, in the emission metric of the, of the line bundle. This needs to be somehow reflected in the, in the resulting curvature formula. And uh, those uh, intrinsic objects I'm going to, to introduce now, these are just, you know, will be just two of them. So for simplicity, now I assume the basis is one dimensional. In particular, that then the direct image is automatically locally free, but not necessary. I maybe I might not necessarily have to correct fiber, but then I take the tension vector on the base. And I want to describe the, the Cordara Spencer map in this setting, in the setting of um, deformations of, of pairs. And it turns out somehow that, um, that where I am landing in with my Cordara Spencer map is, is, is the right space. So it's are really the, the, the T, TX valued uh, zero one forms, which are, which are L2 with respect to all my, my metrics. Here only the, the the, the, the underlying uh, killer metric. And um, in, in such a situation, the most geometric way to describe the, the Kodaria Spencer is, is to do the following. So we have this, um, it's just the, the, the normal sequence of the, of the fiber. Yeah, so the normal bundle is, is trivial in this situation. And what I do is um, I lift this, this vector field D over DS to the total space. I can, I can do it in a, in a infinity in a smooth way, but of course this is quite um, arbitrary. Yeah. In a, um, remember, but remember we have now we have we have this this one one form this omega x prime, which was the the curvature of the h on the total space on the open total space, and I can use this to to get a distinguished lift, yeah, which is adapted to the to, to our geometry. And the requirement is just that the, this smooth lift should be um, horizontal. So, it's, so it should be horizontal, which means it should be perpendicular to all tension to, uh, to all vectors tensions to the fibers. Yeah? And so, if you write down the, this omega x prime in 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 its low in its components with respect to some coordinates, then you can also write down what what the uh, the lift really how it looks like in, in those coordinates. Yeah? And this is really nice yeah, actually, because then you really see what's going on. And it, for this, 
you, you, we now need that, that it, the omega x is, is positive along the fibers, yeah, because otherwise this perpendicular uh, condition, I mean, it's, yeah, it would not really make sense because at some point to really, to when you have this equation and you try to solve it for this, this lift Vs, you need to invert the, the, the metric uh, the metric tensor on, on, on the fibers, yeah. So you need to, this needs to be um, invertible, and this is given by the strict positivity, yeah. So this is this horizontal lift. This is somehow from this um, uh, natural uh, object derived from the geometry. We 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 get we um, we get the two intrinsic objects appearing in the formula. The first is now the Kodara Spencer class. So this is we have this lift and. The bar of it restricted to the fiber gives is a Dolbo representative of the Kodara Spencer. And it turns out that this is really, it's, it's lying in the, in the right space. It's really L2. So of course you, 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 one, should, one should prove this, but you, you really know the asymptotics of the omega X and then you can really compute, show this by computation. And then we, we compute the, so-called geodesic curvature, which is just um, the, 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 the L2, L2 norm with respect to this 1, 1 form omega x. So remember, omega x is not necessarily globally positive. It might be that it's um, maybe it's, it's not positive in, in horizontal direction, but this phi is somehow, so now the base is one-dimensional, fibers is n-dimensional, and this is this phi is somehow the, the, the remaining re remaining eigenvalue of this for one one form in, in horizontal direction. So we have this expression here and because of this um, phi really encodes the positivity of L. So this is LH is strictly positive if and only if this phi is a positive function. It's really a function now on the, on the total space. Yeah? And why is it called geodesic curvature? So in a special case, you could look at a, at a trivial vibration where also the line bundle is trivial, it just comes from the fiber. And where only the Hermitian metric is the thing that, that varies. And in this case, such a vibration is given by just some, some curve in the space of Hermitian metrics on this L. And then this is really the, yeah, the geodesic curvature of this, of this curve in the space of Hermitian metric. This is on the, this, Name is then used in, in all, all those uh, situations. Yeah? This is where this name comes from. And this is the first um, intrinsic objects reflecting the, the variation of the emission metric and its positivity. And now we have, so the, the second, so the first was the Kodari Spencer measuring the variation in complex structure. And then we are ready to state the curvature formula. So when we are in such a situation as de described above, in such this Poincaré type situation. And then I, I look at this L2 metric I introduced on the direct image. And then it turns out, so it's really, it gives a smooth emission metric on the base and its curvature. So the curvature is an endomorphism value to one, one form. So I can apply it to some section psi and pair it with another section uh, psi. And then it's a one one from the base, but the base is one dimension, so it's the same as a, as, a, as a function. And then I have the first, the first term is, is where this, this geodesic curvature is appearing. And so this can, has a sign if, if, if uh, phi has a sign. And the second one is where we have this, uh, where the Cordero Spencer form shows up. Yeah, it's a cut product with our section. So when, when I, I can take the cut product, so this is A is a zero one form with values in, in Tx. So I can contract with the, the, the Tx part and I can take the wedge product with the, the zero one part. And then I get just a, um, a n minus one one form L valued. And this means, so that this should be read as, um, so, that, so this is really plus plus one, and it's inverse applied to the first thing. And okay, and then we repair it with the other part. 
And because of the, the, the Laplacian is a semi-positive operator, the Laplace plus one is also semi-positive as well as just the inverse. And this is so also a semi-positive, all areas semi-positive too. Sorry? Um, yeah, I just, uh, I thought this because it's the same here. Uh, because of uh, Wachner Kodaiba Nakano relation, because I look at somehow PQ forms where P plus Q equals N. So, in particular, here, this were N minus 1, 1 forms. And then, because so the difference is given by, by this here, the theta of the metric. So, it's by do it on the fibers and the uh, and uh, the left shift operator, but this is this is somehow the, the, the curvature of the of the fibers. They, they are related. It's just the same on the gate. So it's just the the, the wedge product with the paler form, and then it's just uh, given this term or just given somehow um, n minus p minus q times the identity. And this goes away in this in those cases. And then so I didn't write it. And this is really also really useful in computations because I know I'm working with polymorphic forms. So D bar and D bar star of it uh, disappear, but also D bar D of okay, is just by degree reasons, but but D star of it is also not there. So this is shows up to be very useful in computations. Yeah. Okay, in particular, this is. So I get the same conclusion as in Benson's case. It's Nakano semi-positive if um, L is semi-positive in X prime, and as 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 uh, imposed from the beginning, positive along the fibers. Yeah. So and this means it's also strictly positive if L is strictly positive. Yeah? Okay. And um, this is somehow the, my my main theorem, and it's really. Um, yeah, it's really, um, I mean, it's, there is, of course, it's building upon work of many work of Schumacher, who did this in the, in the canonical polarized situation. It's just, I just uh, implemented his, his nice um, and very elaborated uh, computation of curvature and all those. It's just the same formula that you might have seen in the, in the compact case. But here. Are you missing something about the values of the plus? Because you say in particular, this is uh, like I'm not saying before. Oh, okay. This is positivity. Uh, this is the Laplacian semi-positive. And then also this is somehow strictly positive. And then this is also <laughs> in the inverse is then also always strictly positive. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, and what can we derive from this? The wet product of R and Psi. Is yeah, this is uh, you have to show along the computation that all at each step you this is well defined and this is the additional uh, yeah, things you have to add here yeah, to the computation. So this is actually uh, the point where at the moment where I failed to do it in the in the for the higher images. But because the good thing is when you work with holomorphic things, you have a lot of serious expansion. You exactly know the asymptotics. Yeah, you, it's just a uh, logarithmic, um, you just as poles along D. I yeah, really have the Loro series expansion, but for just when you work with harmonic forms, they are just L2 and the infinity. It's not really clear how they really behave. What's the, their asymptotic? It's, yeah, this is really a, the, 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 some of the obstruction to, to do it at the moment, to uh, to it for higher direct images. And then what can we derive from it? So the main application is, of course, as I mentioned, the case of uh, the log canonically polarized case. So I have family with uh, Kx plus Ds is ample. And then by work of Yuichi Kobayashi and Tian Yao, <laughs> I have uh, killer, the, the complete Poincaré type killer Einstein matrix on the open fibers. So negative um, Ricci curvature minus one. And now the, the, the role of L is, of course, the relative canonical here. And this family of, of the, the corresponding volume forms derived from the killer Einstein matrix, they are um, they are now uh, given a metric on L, the natural metric on L. And there's an additional theorem that like in, in a canonical polarized situation, 
that um, that this uh, that this bundle has some semi-positivity. Now this is the the, the Kähler Einstein metric, and maybe to, to to give you the reason. So in the, the Kähler Einstein case, maybe in the the Kähler Einstein in case maybe in the in the maybe in the, in, in the compact situation, it's then you have this 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 function phi that you want to show to uh, to show that um, that this is semi positive, and you have this this um, you have an elliptic equation for this function. It's just a function, and on the right hand side you have the norm square of the Kodai Spencer, which is semi positive because it's norm square of something. Yeah. This is somehow this was. Found by Schumacher. This is started the whole business with DSH variation of the answer metric. Metrics. This is really, this is really what you like, like, like a Poisson equation from physics, from classical physics. There you have some, some source term coming from the complex variation of, of the, the, the variation of complex structures, and it dictates some behavior of the of this function reflecting the the variation in Hermitian metrics, yeah. and by applying the, the at, a, at, at the minimum point, this thing here is um, at the minimum. Okay, this is the, the one with um, non-negative eigenvalues, so which will be small equal zero, and then when you when you assume that at the minimum point this would be negative. Then the left hand side is strictly negative, and then this will be negative, which is a contradiction. So by the maximum principle, you get uh, you get this result here. And um, in the in the this is a compact case, so in the open case, you, you, you have the same um, the same elliptic equation here. But then you apply uh, the Yaw's maximum principle for the complete case. And to get a strict positivity, you want to to conclude when this is strictly positive, then the phi is strictly positive on the whole on the whole. Uh, X, X prime, and this for this you need um, you need uh, the these close heat kernel estimates, which luckily also exists in the in the complete case. Yeah. What is your definition of the fact that you are metallized? Um, the Cordaro Spencer is in injective, but in the sense uh, for the deformation of pairs. At each point. At each point, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then we can somehow we can also maybe this should be also phrased in what does it mean on the on the whole x and it's the same as somehow as i mentioned at the beginning when you when you when you add this d then you get a statement about um about what it means on on the on the completed x curly x that kx relative plus d is then uh, is then f and also big if it's effect, effectively parametrized. Yeah. And this is the same reason as I, I explained at the beginning, by somehow compensating with this D, you get a metric with zero long numbers. And, and then also by Buxom's bigness criterion, you get a bigness. But this also, the, those results only hold for a compact space. So I need to assume here compact base S, which is maybe in applications rather rare, but Still, then you have this other result of this kx uh, prime. Okay, and then you can somehow put those things together, the, the, the both theorems, and you get uh, this second corollary that you really have uh, you have a sign for the direct image in the case of uh, log uh, canonically polarized pairs. So this is really a, a, a huge class, and you have like the, just the analog from the canonically polarized case from from uh, yeah, Schumacher or also Bernstein's result. Okay. Um, so what do I want to, okay. Um, what are the techniques for the, maybe I have no time to explain this, this uh, technical uh, computation. I mean, you, to compute curvatures, it's just a second order, a second order, um, Derivatives, and you, you need to differentiate in both in base directions. So, and the metrics defined by fiber integrals. So, you need to differentiate those guys 
And, it, and, it, and when you do this, then the so-called uh, lead derivatives show up. So you can, you can differentiate under the integral by using this lead derivative. So then the result is still a well-defined tensor. So it's really something geometric meaningful. And so you really, you, what you're doing here, you lead differentiate somehow relative end forms, which are L-valued, but it's, it's okay, it's no problem. This is somehow the theory exists. And here in the open case, you need to prove, of course, that this is, that you can do this, yeah, that the result is L2 and you can, that this is really allowed, yeah, at the end is always dominated convergence. And this is where the, how the computation starts. And uh, then the second thing is, when I have this, my, my eta is just, uh, looks like it's just uh, such a pair, a two norm of, of such a section psi. And then the important thing is that, so that your computation would not go somehow, wouldn't go, uh, you would not go, uh, would, wouldn't mess up in your, in your computation that you can split off this, this A2 in a product, yeah? And here, what comes in very handy is the fact that we have cho chosen this horizontal lift because when you, when you take a horizontal lift, you don't need to, to um, differentiate the volume form yeah? because this is derived from this P and this implies that this, this term is not there. Right? In this way, you can, because of this, you can split off this L2 in a product and actually, for the first order derivative, this the second thing is not there because um, because uh, yeah, this was a holomorphic segment. It's holomorphic. So at least in the second, in the first order, you only have one term, and then you uh, continue and use of some have to show I mean the metric is in in in. You, you, you differentiate in, in, in base directions, but in the result, there's no explicit, there's no explicit um, der, um, derivative in base directions anymore. It, it, it all has turned into this, this intrinsic objects in this A as up psi and into this, this phi. Yeah? There's, there's no explicit um, uh, derivative in, in S anymore, only this, this, those objects having really some, some meaning. Yeah? And this is yeah, this is the, the good thing, and for this, of course, you need along the way along the computation you need to show nice nice identities, and this is um, yeah this is what, what Schumacher has done essentially in his computation for in the uh, canonically polarized case, and here in my case I have to to check that it's still okay that everything stays uh, at two at, at each step. Yeah? And okay, Let's skip. Maybe how much time do I have? Maybe another application beside this uh, canonically polarized case is, is the following. I have a, a big line bundle and I have this corresponding cordial decomposition into ample plus effective. And then of course I have a metric on the positive metric on A, a and the singular one on E. And I modified the, the, the positive metric on A a bit by introducing artificially a um, Poincaré type Rows along along E, and I am also I assume that somehow by doing this I do not change uh, the, the curvature of it. But this is maybe it's 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 um, I mean this is okay in the compact case. Maybe also if you have some quasi-projective case where you com can compactify your things. But of course in general in the open case I have to assume it. And then you are in the situation where you can apply this theorem. So you now want to apply it to this to somehow. At the end, you want to get the, the direct image of the relative canonical twisted by F. F is big. So now somehow you want to handle the general, in general, this big case. And you apply it. So you equip this metric F just by this modified positive metric on A and the usual singular metric on E. And we are given just by canonical sections. And then A fulfills the requirements for my, my theorem. And what I get then is that you actually you have to, you get back your E, 
because it's allowed for the L2 condition, you can have poles along E and you get back the original F you were interested in and you get a result that this is like harder positive, yeah? And when you compare it to Bernson pound to the general Bernson pound um, theorem, and you would apply it directly for the, the natural matrix given in this situation, then the, the E is disappearing, yeah? Because it's just the, the multiplier ideal chief of this metric because you're using the singular E, and then you need to, when you apply to F, the F E goes away and you are left with this plus A, which is somehow the, the, the more boring case, which is somehow the, the classical case you already know from Bernson, yeah? But you, you are we're interested in F, twisting by F and not by E. And of course, you could do the same trick here and somehow twist A to, so that, that, such that the multiplier ideal chief is not, it's not there, but then you get a weaker statement like uh, positivity only in the singular sense of, of prophecy. Okay, maybe in the last, last three minutes, some outlook on the, on the, on the higher direct images. So actually the, the main motivation for me was to, to study this case to, because of hyperbolicity questions for the moduli of Log canonically polarized varieties, and um, the and the goal was to implement Schumacher's strategy to cook up a Finsler metric with a negative curvature um, by using the, the the curvature formulas for the, those higher direct images. Yeah, and then you expect the same formula to hold true as in the compact case. So here, the, the first two terms somehow is just what we have seen and. And the first term is just by it's just a it's just a phi when we invert this equation here. It's just the first term in, in, in my in my formula. And the new term is, is the third term with uh, Laplace minus one. And then this in general has no sign because the, the only the negative comp contribution is the, the 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 thing coming from the harmonic projection of the of the of the last of the last guy. Right? So you get a negative term which has this form. But somehow this doesn't work because when you cook up this metric you 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 use a, um, a you use a appropriate um, convex combination of all those and then there is some cancellation rule um, um, given by the structure of of um, of, of uh, by the structure of curvature, and actually when you when you forget about the Laplace <laughs> and you forget about the first term because of the phi, then you really you really see uh, the, the somehow you really see the this rese resembles pretty much uh, the curvature formula given by Griffiths for the classical Hodge bundles. I think you, then you have this this. You have this harmonic projections, you have this, uh, the last two integrals, the Laplace is not there, just this harmonic projections of both of both things. Then, then you get back, you get this the, the Hodge the curvature of the Hodge bundles. And also you know that there's only a sign in the somehow in the in the lowest piece. Yeah. And those can be used like to implement Schumacher's strategy to cook up this this negatively curved Pinsler metric, because then you dualize, you take the relative there do all end up with those direct images and then they can be used somehow then you have this look at this higher Kodaro Spencer maps and then by, by using this you can somehow when you take roots you can you have metrics on the symmetric powers or TS and have, take roots and then you what you get is only a Finster metric but would, would be still okay to to get um to get uh, to conclude somehow something like Kobayashi hyperbolicity. Okay, and this is, I think I will stop here. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you.